Hello and welcome. This is the second of a two-part video series covering resources and reserves. Before watching this video on reserves, if you have not already done so, it is recommended that you first watch the previous video covering resources. Mineral reserves, also called ore reserves, are the part of the mineral resource that has been shown to currently be economical to mine out at the time of reporting. Mineral reserves are upgraded or converted mineral resources. When a producer converts resources to reserves, they are taking mineral resources, which are minerals that were demonstrated previously to be economically mineable sometime in the future, and demonstrating that the minerals are economically mineable right now. So again, mineral resources are minerals that have been demonstrated to be able to be mined out for a profit sometime in the future. Mineral reserves are all a part of the mineral resource that has been converted to the status of demonstrated to be mineable for a profit right now. Upgrading mineral resources to reserves is done by the competent person. To upgrade resources to reserves, the competent person prepares either a feasibility study or a pre-feasibility study in which he applies what is known as the modifying factors. To fully justify an upgrade from resources to reserves, the producer may or may not have to drill more holes. The producer will show the method of mining and will have considered the expected cost for mining. They will have looked at the expected method of processing and considered the costs associated with this, including looking at the extraction rate and mineral losses during extraction. They will have obtained or will be able to obtain all the necessary permits and will have considered the costs associated with this. They will have looked at all laws and ordinances and will have satisfied or will be expected to satisfy all legal requirements and they will have considered the costs associated with this. They will have shown that they are able to satisfy all of the environmental requirements and will have considered the fees and costs associated with this. They will have considered all taxes associated with mining. They will have shown that they have the ability to provide the necessary labor, energy, water, and other supplies. These modifying factors are used to determine which part of the resources are currently mineable for a profit and which are not. When converting mineral resources to reserves, the competent person includes dilution and losses into the estimate. Dilution occurs because some of the non-valuable dirt and rock surrounding the reserves must also be mined out, which increases the total tonnage of material being pulled out of the ground. This dilutes the ratio of valuable materials versus total material, which lowers the stated ore grade. Losses occur during mining and processing. Mining is not a perfect process. Some of the valuable mineral is left behind, and some is lost during processing. The reported quantity of minerals in reserves has an allowance for losses already subtracted off of the total. A mineral reserve is an estimate of the total quantity and grade of valuable mineral that could be mined out for a profit. To calculate the estimate, a price per unit of measurement must be selected, such as a price per ounce or ton. In other words, if a company reports that they have 50 million ounces of valuable mineral in reserves, they are demonstrating at the time of reporting that they can mine out 50 million ounces for a profit as long as the price of the mineral is above a stated value. As the price of minerals rise and fall, reserve quantities must sometimes be adjusted. When the price of minerals rise, reserves may be increased to include material that previously could not be mined out for a profit at the lower price per ounce or ton but now could be mined out for a profit at the new higher price per ounce or ton. When the price of minerals fall, some reserves may be converted back to resources as some material that previously could be mined out for a profit at the higher price per ounce or ton no longer can currently be mined out for a profit at the lower price. This fact highlights an important point. The total quantity of reserves that a producer has is not a fixed value. Rather, it varies based on many factors including the retail price of the minerals being mined. Upgrading resources to reserves can be very costly. It may require more drilling and more essay work. For some mines, the entire resource may be converted to reserves all at once. For other mines, it is much more cost effective as well as more reliable to prove up reserves as they go. In other words, reserves are proven in stages. 
As the valuable mineral is mined out, a new section of the resource right next to the mined out section is converted to reserves to replace it. It is some company's stated goal to increase or maintain the total quantity of the reserves each year. When a company increases reserves, they are increasing longevity, increasing value, and maybe lowering certain costs, such as depletion costs. This gives the producer the ability to time converting resources to reserves as an accounting tool of sorts. For this reason, when a company chooses to convert resources to reserves is often an economic decision. You may remember from the video on mineral resources that resources are split into three categories based on the level of confidence in the results from the testing. Measured mineral resources, indicated mineral resources, and inferred mineral resources. Mineral reserves have only two categories based on level of confidence, proven reserves and probable reserves. The level of confidence in inferred mineral resources is not high enough to directly convert inferred resources to reserves without inferred resources first being upgraded to measured or indicated resources through more testing. Indicated resources are converted to probable reserves. Probable reserves have a lower level of confidence than proven reserves. Probable reserves have a reasonable level of confidence in continuity of mineral and consistency of grade. In most cases, measured mineral resources are converted to proven reserves. Proven reserves have a high level of confidence in continuity of mineral and consistency of grade. Proven reserves also have a high level of confidence in the modifying factors. Sometimes measured resources are converted only to probable reserves instead of proven reserves. This reflects not a lower level of confidence in the geological results but rather a lower level of confidence in one or more of the modifying factors. So that's mineral reserves. I hope that you enjoyed this two-part series on mineral resources and reserves. Thanks for watching.